I just stopped at a place called Morant's Curve and uh, well it's kind of a bend and when I came around it was kind of jaw dropping so I decided that uh, this is where I would take a video. <laughs> this is the second video and this one's going to be about uh, Makoto and uh, what a lovel lovely companion she's been. She's a seven month old wine runner. Um, I got her when she was seven and a half weeks old when she... Uh, or in, in Calgary. Um, kind of funny, when I first got the dog, uh, Mikoto, <clears throat> I thought I was getting a more fully developed creature. Um, when I got her, she didn't re even really know how to walk or do stairs or run. God, she couldn't even hold in her shit. <laughs> which is a funny thing so I, I actually brought her to my friend's house without permission um kind of a bad move but I really wanted the dog and it just I was lazy and it didn't work out right so I put a like two hour timer on my phone and every two hours eh, every hour and a half I would uh I would have to take her out um this went on for a full week. I think this is the closest thing that I'll ever feel to having a newborn child. Um, because I didn't, I didn't get any sleep, none, like two, well, two hours at a time, really. And every two hours she took a poop or went to the washroom or something that week. I was so tired. Um, so originally I thought I was going to be able to get Mikoto and then, uh, leave and go on my journey. And what a shock it was and a realization when I got her and she couldn't do any of the things. So I actually delayed my trip uh, by three months and uh, we did a bunch of training. Let's go. Cousin. Let's go. Ah! Oh, 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 okay. Oh, you got it up. Good girl. Good girl. Uh, Mizu. Mizu. Hey, listen. Mizu. 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 No, all the way down. Mizu. Oh, you. Mizu. Mizu. You ruined my video. Oh, there you go. Her four uh, core commands come, lay down, sit, and bark are the. Japanese elements. Uh, kaze is wind. Uh, that's come. Mizu is water. That's lay down. Suchi is earth. That's sit. And then he is fire. And that's bark. So those are those are pretty down pat. Uh, we'll see if I can get a video of her doing all her all her tricks. So starting out, uh, I would have her run maybe like three or four kilometers a day. I had a trailer. Um, and she would spend a lot of time in the trailer. And then as we worked it, worked up, um, she's now doing, I don't actually measure, but I imagine it's somewhere between 20 to 30 kilometers, depending on the day. Her biggest day though, the one day that I did measure, she did do a 35 uh, kilometer uh, day. So that was pretty big. And then she beat it again, uh, a 37 kilometer day. So she's, she's pretty, she has a lot of endurance. Um, you're not, so I get a lot of flack because a lot of people say you probably shouldn't uh, exercise your dog that much until they're older. But I talked to two veterinarians. I, I did a bunch of research. Um, and as long as they get the rest, like they know if they're in pain or things aren't good for them. So uh, the veterinarian said if they like, 
if she seems like she doesn't want to do it, then don't let her do it because they'll like, they'll be in pain. Like you'll know. And, uh, I mean, when she's tired, she barks when she stops, like wants to stop, she'll bark. She'll, uh, she'll just lay down. Um, so it's been pretty good that way. So for the first part of the journey from Ontario to Quebec, I pretty much got to take the great trail. Uh, I did maybe, uh, maybe a hundred kilometers of road not including i don't include uh dirt roads like back back roads farmer roads all that kind of stuff uh but pavement <clears throat> i maybe did a hundred kilometers and the rest was trail and or back gravel roads and uh i never had her on a leash at those times and uh, once i got to quebec though the trail stopped and it became more paved roads so we had a little learning uh to do um, but I, at first it was, it was really hard to let her off leash and run beside me. And the training regime, uh, was pretty specific. If she stayed on the right side of me, she got a treat. If she went to the left side, she'd get a smack. Um, and it worked out wonderful. Uh, she never crosses, she never crosses me now. She'll permanently stay on the right side. And, uh, I've never, I've never had a problem with it now. We've traveled almost... God, I, I want to say at least 2,000 kilometers on, uh, has to be on highway now, maybe two, no, maybe 1,500 kilometers. Um, no, maybe 2,000 kilometers. Um, so when I first got Makoto, uh, or not when I first got her, but when we, when we started the journey, October 9th is the day that we started. Um, the first little bit, maybe the first month, I actually kind of regretted getting a dog and well, I didn't regret getting a dog. I just like, I thought maybe I should have waited before I got the dog. Um, because it definitely was hard. I was, I was out of shape. I was pulling a trailer. She was, you know, 10, 20, she's now 50 pounds. They get up to be 90 pounds. So the first little bit, it was a struggle. My legs weren't up to the task. And it also showed me a lot of things that I maybe didn't like about myself or that I couldn't handle. Um, she definitely, having a dog showed me how to have patience, um, how to love unconditionally. Like there's a lot of moments the dog does something that infuriates you <laughs> or infuriates me. And uh, you just gotta, I don't know, you gotta learn to love. Like she, she taught me a lot about things. Um, just like about myself and you know it taught me some things that I had to work on with myself and she's definitely made me better um yeah so Weimar runners aren't uh, really known for being cold uh weather dogs Which is really surprising because maybe it's because she was born well not born but like from a very young age uh she was uh, immersed <laughs> in the cold she was she was made in the cold uh because she loves it yeah and we had some pretty cold days um one of my uh, one of the people i know tanya she sent me a uh coat and it wasn't like a it was just like a like a coat. It wasn't like a specially designed, uh, super cold winter coat or anything like that. Um, and I made her wear it for a lot of times, but she didn't, I don't think she liked wearing a coat. Um, and it kept her, I don't know how warm it actually, like, uh, I think she li just liked the cold because a lot of times she would try to take it off. Uh, I don't know if she was just like uncomfortable in a coat or maybe it made her too hot. Uh, I'm not sure. But uh, for a lot of the journey, I mean, we went through some like negative 20 days, negative 30 days. We had one negative 40 day um, and she, she powered through it all. Um, she's a trooper. Um, now the trailer though, uh, I did deck out the trailer. Uh, before I started, I uh, hand stitched a bunch of waterproof material on the outside of the trailer. 
Um, then I hand stitched two layers of uh, 3M insulation on the inside. And then I hand stitched another layer of just fabric on the inside. Um, she had two two pound wool blankets and an emergency blanket. So when she was in the trailer, she was warmer than I could ever hope to be. Uh, at nighttime, <laughs> she learned that the sleeping bag equals warmth. So um, she would, or well, she does still, she'll bury herself into the sleeping bag and then she'll do this little freak out flip and then she'll pop her head out and uh, rest her head beside mine in the sleeping bag. Now, I'm, I think I'm going to have to get her her own. And as much as I would love to continue snuggling in a sleeping bag with her, uh, she is getting much bigger and it's getting hard uh, for me to be comfortable. And it's like it's a mummy sleeping bag. So, I mean, there's only so much room. Like her paws are around my neck and then I'm sleeping on my side. And it's quite uh, it's quite the thing. So the first time she found out, and I didn't, I didn't know at the time, so she would stick her head into the sleeping bag uh, and go right down to my, to my feet, and she'd be breathing on them, and it would be wonderful, and I'd be super warm. Um, and then I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd be like, what the heck? My sleeping bag is wet. Why is my sleeping bag wet? And I couldn't figure it out. It happened like two or three times, and then finally I'm like, okay, internet, tell me what's going on. So I went to the internet and I asked, hey, what's going on? And it said uh, condensation, essentially. Uh, it was so cold that her breathing in the bottom was causing condensation, which would get the sleeping bag wet. So that's when we had to teach her how, well, I had to teach her how to do her little freak out flip and uh, pop her head out. I'm sure everyone's tired of hearing me talk. So I'm gonna let uh, Makoto take it from here for a few minutes. Some days are easier than others. <laughs> Biking across Canada doesn't always mean having to sleep in a tent. Sometimes you have to enjoy the hotel, the hotel bed. This is Makoto. She doesn't like to lay still. She's really annoying sometimes, but she's absolutely wonderful too. Right? Right? Oh. Oh, not when you give me Corona. Styling. <laughs> <laughs>